Now the next method that we'll take a look at is if I run this by amount again, let's use this one. And let's imagine that we have two uh, sales receipts that come up to this amount of 1,015.25. So I'm gonna go back to the first tab and I'm gonna say, we're gonna say this is gonna be another sales receipt. And let's imagine this is gonna be cus customer 10. And let's get the date right this time. This is on 9, 19 so let's say this happened on uh 090122 how about that and then down here let's say it's a cash sale but this time i'm going to put it into the clearing account i'm going to put it into the clearing account because they're cash sales and i expect to get multiple cash sales that i'm going to group together put into the bank at one time so if i put this directly into the the checking account it won't match what's on the bank feed or bank statement for the bank reconciliation uh, because so therefore I have to use this clearing account. So let's say that this is going to be hours and let's just say this one is going to be a thousand and this is going to do the same thing. It's going to uh, increase, but this time the clearing account and then the other side is going to go to revenue and I'm going to make another one here, save and new. And this is going to be to, uh, to the next one here let's say this is going to be to customer custom i'm just jumping up to 15. we're just going to make a leap a leap to 15 here because we got all the numbers in the world that we can choose from and let's make this cash too it's going to go into payments to deposit and let's go into my nose is really itchy stay focused stay focused okay 1525 let's make this 15.25 1525 right 1525 yes okay so these two will add up to that deposit this will do the same thing for 1525 let's save it and close it save and close so so now if i go to my balance sheet i'm going to say run it and if I go into my payments to deposit account, going into it, we're going to say now we've got the 15 and the 1000, which of course ties out to this amount, but it's got two different dollar amounts. That's why we had to use the clearing account. So then I'm going to go back and then the other side went to the income statement. So if I go to the income statement, it's in, of course, let's run it to refresh it. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. But I'm so slow. I hate waiting for myself. So you gotta wait for yourself. So it's gonna be these two. Okay, so there's those. All right, so then if I go back to the first tab, then now we've got this amount in the payments to deposit. So basically we're right here on the flow chart. So if I was to do this internally, then I can make the deposit. So at the end of the day, we're imagining we go to the bank physically, deposit 1015.25 as one lump sum, or you can imagine a credit card grouping the payments together for 1015.25, putting that into your bank account physically, going into your bank account. So that means on our side, we have to transfer it from here to the checking account in that one lump sum. So I could do that internally, go into the first tab, plus button and the bank feeds. And then the bank feeds has this nice little widget thing up top where I can group my sales receipts and payments in the same way we did before. So this, this top grouping groups sales receipts and receive payments. And so I could group those together and deposit them as 1015 if i record this deposit that way then my deposit would be recorded as a deposit increasing the checking account the other side decreasing that amount to be deposited the clearing account going back to zero and then i could basically just use my bank feeds to verify the deposit once again the bank feeds would not be doing anything new there they would just be uh, double checking the deposit helping us out with the bank reconciliation or I could say, okay, maybe I'm gonna to try to, uh, well, that's basically what I have to do. You could try to say, I'm gonna to try to wait till something clears the bank, right? You might say, I'm gonna to try to wait till it clears the bank 
and then connect that to uh, to the receive payments. And let's just take a look at that. It's a little bit more difficult to do that though, because now if I, let's say I refresh this screen, I'm gonna say refresh the screen and see if it kind of uh, picks anything up. I doubt it will because uh, it would be more difficult for it to do that. So see, here's the Skillshare, right? You're saying, well, why doesn't it match? I've got that amount in, in the payments to deposit. But if I was to match it here, I'd have to go to match, find a match, and then I'd have to check both of these off in order to match it. So you could do it, right? Like I could go in here and just check both of them off to match it, but it's a lot more difficult because now you're, you're trying to you're trying to see what cleared the bank. You've got multiple items that cleared that, I'm sorry, one item that cleared the bank and multiple items on our side that you're trying to connect together in order to, in order to fix it. So you're basically doing a bank reconciliation where your deposits don't match up uh, on your books than the other books. They match up in total, but the amounts of the deposits aren't quite right. So you're kind of forced to do it the other way, really. You're kind of forced to say, okay, I'm not gonna record that. I'm gonna, do you wanna leave without saving? Yes. You're kind of forced to record the deposit this way and then, and then just match it to the bank feed. So if I was to record the deposit this way, save and close, then I can go to my, my checking account, go into my checking account. And so now I've got that deposit of the 1,015 right here as one lump sum now instead of two. And then I can go up top and my payments to deposits are back down to zero going into that, but it's coming back out here with the two amounts. So I can see them going in and out, which is good. And now if I go into my bank feeds, I can just match out helping us up with the bank reconciliation and it'll probably pick it up since it doesn't need to match out two items in our books to match that one deposit. So let's try to match it out again. I'm gonna refresh it and say, is it gonna pick it up? I would think it should this time. If it doesn't, then there's a problem. See, it picked it up. It knows what it's doing. So there, so there we have it. So that's kind of how you almost have to do it with the sales receipt. So if you had a cash register situation, you almost have to use that undeposited funds and then you're probably going to have to group the deposits on your end which means you're just going to be using the bank feeds in order to match if i record this it's not going to do anything new it's just helping me tie out what's on the bank to what's on the book double checking that that is indeed the case so so companies that have a cash register are probably gonna still be doing a full service cash based system instead of relying on the bank to record the revenue side of things due to the logistics of the business they're in, but may still be on basically uh, a dependent on the bank feeds cash based system for the vendor side or expenses side of things because they might be paying all their expenses with basically automatic transaction forms that they can basically automate. So the revenue side, even for small businesses, will often be dependent upon not simply the size of the business, but what what's the standard norm for collecting revenue uh, for that particular business and what's gonna work best for you. So that you gotta kind of think through that stuff before you set up the bank feeds or else you can end up with a mess.